Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Jade Falcon Freeborn. So this is episode 51, I think. And this is Tuesday night, April the 10th, 11th, something like that. Um, so uh, once again, this is the second day or the second, uh, yeah, the second day after... Um, or the day after 999 drop recording for me, but second day after uh, when you guys see it. So today is going to be another day of just collecting C bills. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to make the attempt Wednesday to switch to 999. There's been a couple of uh, patches to the to the uh, um, new release already, so I kind of hesitant about just switching over right now. I'd rather wait um, so I don't have to keep reinstalling it, kind of thing. So. Um, so today is just basically going to be a sea bear run. If we have a look at the map real quick, looks like the map has been reset, but I don't know if that means, because there's nobody on here, the map's been reset. I think it probably what it means is that they haven't got the new online version working correctly yet. I haven't checked the boards or anything yet, so I don't know. Don't don't quote me on any of that. But uh, it doesn't matter. I moved back to Ironhold at the end of the last episode. Um, just because I want to start from Jade Falcon Homeworld. Um, and I don't know, if we go to, uh, Reputation, are we still allied with Jade Falcon? I would imagine we are. Yes, we are. Okay, so that's good. I don't know if we will be after I update or not, but I'm hoping we do. Uh, if not, we'll just easily build up and, and get allied with them as fast as we can. So if we go to the contracts real quick, uh, actually the other thing is, if we go to the mech base, did I change anything from the last episode? I don't think I did. Yeah, I know the map can't be downloaded. Uh, I removed one of the Macs. I can't remember what it was. Was it the Griffin? It was one of the ones who... Ah, man. It's been a hell day for me, so sorry. I apologize. It's going to be a short episode today. I, I walked into work this morning and had 10 jobs sitting on my desk, and they brought in another one before the end of the day, and I'm like, how the hell am I supposed to finish all this before the end of the month? Anyway... So it was really, really busy for me at work today, so I'm kind of a little bit out of it right now, so I apologize for that. But, um, yeah, so let's have a look. Um, oh, yeah, the one thing about the sea bills, I thought we were only going to have a few million. Turns out, after selling a ton of stuff, we had 7.4 million, so I sold... Um, like, we still have almost, like, where is our... Oh, we got the faction store open here? Last time, when I came here yesterday, the faction store wasn't really open. Although, I don't know if it, it's really worth it because I mean other than mech parts um, I'm not really finding anything in the mech, the uh, store that's any better than what's like I can buy here right like this is actually pretty good right your large pulses large heavy lasers like you know what I mean I can get better stuff that's not in the store um, but being allied with Jade Falcon is kind of where we're going to stay though I don't think there's anything amazing here there was a couple of things that I saw oh wait and we want to buy this Thank okay. you. Clan heat sink cooling pods are my new goal now. Uh, I thought about trying to keep going for the pro, pro double heat sink kits, and while they're good, um, I'm not convinced for the clans it's the best way to go. Um, the if you think about it, the um, pro double heat sinks themselves are one full ton, minus four percent. I know the internal um, uh, double heat sink kit gives you minus 20% weapon fire. Um, but for the clan max, when you drop an exchanger in, um, and then the proto, the proto double heat sinks are like, or the, sorry, the uh, heat sink cooling pods are only half a ton. So I can put two of those in for the same weight that I could put in one of the others. Now I know they're ac occupying more space, right? But for the 4%, and four heat sinks that I'm getting from the Pro Double heat sink, I'm getting minus 10% and four um, heat uh, dissipated. So, you know, after about three, after like if I put, for instance, a lighter engine in and then four Pro Double heat sinks, that's minus 20, minus what? Uh, God, my brain's not working. Minus 36% heat generated. Right. Whereas if I put a little heavier engine in, right, with a double heat sink kit, then I don't need as many heat sinks, but I can use the exchanger, which is minus 15 percent, 
and I, if I had four heat sinks in or four, yeah, four heat sinks in before, and I use eight cooling pods, that's minus 40%, and then minus another 15% on top of that for the exchanger. So I think I can probably get more out of exchangers and uh, heat sink cooling pods than I would be able to get out of the um, Pro Double Heat Sink Kit. Now, don't 100% quote me on that. I'm just kind of feeling that that's kind of a bit better way to go. And if we have a look, um, this is kind of what I mean. I'm still working on the Timberwolf. Everyone, I know, several people have mentioned the underwhelming loadout on this guy. And once again, it's it's a uh, um, not so much a, a um, product of the space that this thing has. It's a product of how much weight it's got left over. So if we're using 12 tons for weapons right now, which is really not a lot for a 75 ton mech, right? It's only 12 tons of weaponry. Now it's all lasers and we're generating a, a crap ton of heat. But with five of these, it's minus 20% of the heating, you know. Um, I guess if we switch this to a uh, pro double heatsink kit, it would be better. Uh, but then I can't use all these heat sinks. Um, so I don't know, maybe. Um, actually, it might be, now that I think about it, it actually might be way better in this mech than anywhere else. The problem with this pro, double, pro heat sink kit is that I've only got one. Um, and if we lose it, it's gone. I know, I guess I could just do this and then take out three heat sinks. Let's just see where we're at here. I should have checked beforehand. Let's just check before. Let's go back to how we were. So our heat efficiency is 146 alpha strike for 134 heat sinking. So it's a difference of 12. And if we go back to dropping this in, Like that, we got three tons left over, so we can put more um, either weapons or sinking in. What do we got here? Yeah, see, this is a difference of thirty, right? So I know I've got I've got three more things I could put in, but really the, the three tons now has to be used to cool, right? I can't, if I had pro double heat sinks, that's going to add. It's going to be another minus twelve percent. So minus. What? Four, let's say 14 heat. So it'll be 102. And then another, what, 4, 8, 12. So I think these, each of the proto double heat sinks remove 4 heat, if I remember correctly. So adding another 12, which would be 98. So it would be, yeah, it would be darn, it would be less, marginally less. But the, the big problem then becomes. If the prototype pro double heatsink kit gets hit off the CT, right? Like let's let's say this gets CT'd and hit, right? Now we're in huge trouble. Whereas if we revert, go back, right? We got a difference of twelve here. Yeah, let's say the heatsink kit gets destroyed. Yeah, it's still about the same. A little bit better in this respect, but not much. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm still up in the air with it. We don't have any more space. I mean, we can't pull out the Pharaoh because then we need to get weight somehow. Do have a heat bank in here. That's one ton. If we remove this and put in two more heat sink cooling pods, we'd be losing another 10% heat. So another 14 that would take us down to 132 and the heat sinking would be up to so it says minus 9 so that would be 143 minus 4 139 so 130 we'd have 139 sinking and then 132 alpha strike which would be better I think so if we can find another if we can find another heat sink cooling pod I mean the maximum overheat is kind of nice but we don't absolutely have to have it um, I'd still prefer two uh, heat sink cooling pods. So we've got one right now. We just need to get another one, right? It's really, I mean, the two um, large improved heavy lasers hitting for 90 each is really the punch, and then the four ER mediums falling up. Like, this is an alpha strike if we hit with everything um, at optimal range of 322. So it's pretty, I mean, it, you know, it's not bad for, for a 75-ton mech. 
Plus, we've got the command console in here too. Remember, so uh, this is really the command mech of the thing. If we the group, if we remove the command console for here, from here, we'd get in an extra three tons, um, which then we could you know use for a different loadout. But I'm not sure how that would work. Like we we could probably pull out the Pharaoh to give us more slots. Um, drop in some stealth armor or something, or maybe not stealth armor, but like feral lamellar or something like that. Use this, yeah, so we'd be back up to the same amount of slots. But, you know, the fact that we can't change the XL engine, the core, the core is really, you know, it's giving us speed. So the bonus of this is you've got a 75 ton Mac with lots of armor that can quickly get behind enemies and hit them for 322 in the back. That's kind of how I want to play this. The fact that it's got the command console gives everybody um, way better um, visual range and being able to see the enemy is, I think, more important than anything for the better chances to hit and all that stuff too, right? So anyway, that's just my comment on this. Um, can't kill too much time here. It's kind of late in the evening, so I got to knock off a mission real quick here. So let's go contracts. And let's find something... In the middle here, stubborn surrender against Clan Wolf. Yeah, what's this one? Man of the People's an escort, a little long. Forward observers, eviction, 417 salvage. Uh, local government though. All right, let's do stubborn stubborn surrender. It's a four skull, middle of the road. Let's negotiate this, and we're gonna go full salvage because we don't really need money. But salvage, we get an opportunity to pick up some good stuff here. All right, uh, let's go with the main lance. Second lance did fairly well last episode. Once again, I still haven't decided 100% who is gonna take command, but I'm leaning towards Hannibal right now. Sorry for me sounding a little funny up here. I'm just uh, this way, here we go. Uh, just a little dry up here today. Summer is slowly making its way here to Canada, <laughs> to Southern Ontario. So kind of excited about that. I was actually able to go without a sweater today. It was that good. So, all right, let's deploy. Command interface initiated. All right, here we go. Oh, okay, this map. Yeah, so I don't know. If, I don't know if yes, you guys are from. Uh, sorry, it's so so dry up here. Um, if you guys are from uh, warm climates or cold climates, um, I noticed it's a uh, several uh, subscribers and commenters. Looks like they're from Eastern Europe. I'm sure you guys know what it's like to have nice cold winters. Um, I'm in Southern Ontario, which is pretty close to the U.S. border, so it's not as cold here. I, I was I used to live in Winnipeg, which is a little farther north, more out in the prairies, and it was kind of cold out there. Um, well, really cold. I mean, we we played hockey outside. Half of the games we played. Uh, my team, we played outside, so, um, because the ice, the rinks were outside, like half of them were outside, right, so everything was frozen. Okay, 3x, Timberwolf, nice, Griffin, when you get some Timberwolf parts, I think. Um, so, yeah, and I, I, kind of why I was breaking this up is that uh, I was mentioning that today, finally got a chance to go outside without a sweater on. Um, I think it was almost 10 degrees here today. 10 degrees Celsius. Um, usually around zero Celsius is kind of the breaking point for sweaters. You kind of get to a jacket around like minus one or so. Um, at least that's the way it is at the end of the winter. Like I know at the end of the winter in Canada, some people are outside in a sweater at like minus two, minus three, because it's like we're so fed up of it with winter. We're like, let's just get this over with, right? Um, but yeah, we, you know, it's not so bad. Um, going outside tomorrow is apparently supposed to be 70, 17 Celsius, which will be awesome. That's like shorts weather here. I still remember my friend, um, he moved down to Australia and I remember, I remember him saying he was, I, I think it was Perth he was in, and uh, he was saying, you know, the first year that he moved there, he was like, it became winter down there and you know, he's outside in t-shirts and shorts and uh, he was like, I was walking downtown and I <laughs> It was like one or two degrees Celsius or something. And he's like, people are out in parkas and, you know, and I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, they had parkas and full, full, like full hoods on and stuff. And I'm like, wow, that's, <laughs> they don't know from cold, man. You need that when you're out in minus 20. 
talk to me when you guys are walking down the street and all your uh, the uh, condensation from breathing through your nose freezes all your nose hairs. I still remember that as a kid walking to school. And this was in Winnipeg, mind you. Walking to school with snow pants, um, long johns on, which are basically underwear that runs your entire body, full length arms and full length legs and everything. Having those on, yes, the underwear with the trap doors. Um, and um, we had to go to school with those on because it was so cold. And then, of course, our pants and snow pants. And then uh, our parkas on top of that. Um, you know, two sets of gloves, like, well, mittens. We didn't use wear gloves. And then we had a ski mask we would wear, right? And uh, it was basically a regular hat with a big, um, um, basically, mask that covered all but your eyes on your face, right? So you'd, and they sometimes, some of them would have, like, the mouths cut out. But you'd go to school and you'd be breathing through this thing and you'd get to school and the whole front of the, <laughs> the ski mask was all like ice from the condensation from your breath. And we were like, how does this really help us? Because we're freezing. But really it was to, to um, protect you from windburn and stuff, right? Because uh, when your skin gets frozen cold like that um, and the wind blows on it, you can get windburn. End up with a red face for quite a while. But yeah, I still remember that as a kid, and now I'm thinking, you know, Southern Ontario, it's, a, it's, la it's like laughable for me. You know, that it snows here, and it's like three inches of snow, and people are like, oh, it's a snowstorm, and I'm like, snowstorm? I'm saying a snowstorm. <laughs> snowstorm was when you got to dig your car out because it's completely buried in snow. That's a snowstorm. All right, let's start this up here. Let's hit this griffin. Um, yeah, so... I don't know what climate everyone's from, but if anyone's experienced severe cold, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm sure people who are uh, in Eastern Europe or um, uh, in Russia or um, any of the um, split off, uh, pardon me because I don't know all the states in Russia. I know Russia and Belarus, Ukraine, uh, Estonia, Latvia, and... There's three there, and I can't remember. I apologize if you're if you live there, and I can't remember the name of your country. Um, I used to pride myself on knowing like all the countries on a world map, but the borders have changed um, in the former Soviet Union. I'm going to use uh, I I still I still call the former Soviet Union Russia. I know I shouldn't. It's it's probably taboo. Um, and if anyone's from the former Soviet Union or any of those territories, can you please uh, leave a comment? Um, in the comment section down below correcting me on this kind of stuff because I don't know a whole lot about um, that area anymore um, but I used to know all like I used to be, as a kid I used to be able to draw the full world map from memory um, and know where almost all of the countries were now a lot of the African nations I apologize again I didn't know where a lot of the uh, African nations were um, because once again there's so many small ones there too right um, Let's go to six. Let's just wreck this guy. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, I, I studied World War II a fair bit, so I know all the European nations fairly well. Um, but I haven't been following world history as much as I used to. It just infuriates me. Um, the um, animosity that countries and peoples can have for each other. Um, I am, I hate, you know, even my name is Attack and Destroy. Because I love war games, I love the idea of studying warfare. However, I'm kind of a pacifist at heart. I don't like world conflict, especially when so many people suffer. And it's just for a lot of dumb reasons, I find, most of the time. Um, I find a lot of ideolo like, ideologies need to change. Um, I think everybody in the world of people, and we shouldn't be inflicting our beliefs on anybody else. You want to believe in a certain religion? That's great. You want to believe in your state? That's great. I have no problem with any of that. But as soon as that spills over onto other people, that's kind of where I draw the line. Right? And I've had people ask me, you know, oh, you know, you're a pacifist. You'd never go to war. And it's like, no, man. I, I, I'd be the first, one of the first people to pick up a weapon to go and fight against people that are um, want to come in and you know, fight against us because I, I just I don't want I don't wouldn't tolerate that and I wouldn't I wouldn't um, um, want my children to have to end up dealing with being told what they need to do all the time just because someone's got their certain agenda and that's going to be my political rant for now because I get angry and I just 
end up losing my cool, and I don't want to do that. All right, so let's just <laughs> let's just eliminate the wolf clan because <laughs> they disagree with us. Ah, uh, he says. <laughs> Uh, so one thing about gaming is you can get your frustrations out without actually having to inflict that on other people. So that's the Timberwolf. We don't want to kill him. The Summoner's back here. We want to move in on him? Uh, you know what? I've had bad... We've had a few bad um, problems moving in super close on people. So I want to kind of stay a little bit farther away. This guy, isn't this guy like the, um, he's a 65 ton, right? I always kind of remember this guy like the, um, uh, Thunderbolt, unless I'm wrong. He's kind of like the Thunderbolt, uh, version for the clans. At least he kind of looks like that. Eh. Okay, I want to pull the legs off this Timberwolf. So, let me know in the comments what you think of the, uh, the uh, Timberwolf build on our end. See, I wonder what this guy's running. I'm under heavy fire. Yeah, I noticed that. So I don't know, do the Timberwolves all have the same size engine? Or do some of them have lighter engines? Yeah, I know we got low armor. We've always got low armor. It's because we're fucking around. Yeah, see, like the heat on them is ridiculous, right? I don't like those mechs where you fire like two or three turns with alphas and then you just have like no heat sinking left. I was thinking too, the next campaign I do, I'd like to try a different set of builds. Like a lot of, I mean really it's either we've got a melee build and you work towards Berserker or you've got a, Damage. like we have with the clans here, uh, a primarily um, gunnery build where you work towards Warlord. I'd love to try a series where I don't go those routes, so we don't have multi-target for anybody. We just kind of go up the piloting and tactics lines um, and see where that takes us. Alright, so let's see how accurate these racks are. Um, so let's do an offensive push on the Timberwolf, and I don't want to overdo it. Uh, let's just go to three, because these guys are lower armor. We're going to push the leg. Okay, he's got damage reduction because he's standing in the trees, that's right. So we should be able to take this leg next turn. This guy's going to die horribly. Yeah, see, he's got probably a tag, three lasers, maybe an Ultra 20 or Ultra 5, and two launchers. One of these is a heavy. Maybe two are heavies, I don't know. It might be something to explore anyway. Is an auto cannon build maybe? That guy didn't even move. I know this is giving that Timberwolf a shot at us, but uh, I don't think he's gonna have a leg anyway. Or maybe he will. Why do I talk? Sometimes I don't even know why I say things. Um, do we need to move? I don't think we need to move. So arrow and laser to A and the LRMs to B and fire. Multiple targets confirmed. Ooh. Nice one. <sighs> we do have to get some uh, LRM ammo that's going to give us the uh, ability to use the dead fire. And I can't remember. It's not called dead fire. It's called something else, I think. I think they changed the name. Let's uh, let's OP this guy. How much has he got left here? We're gonna have to use the ultra on him. And firing. Really? Well, we're gonna take damage. At least he's almost overheated here. I don't know why I mess around with these guys. I should just kill everybody with like extreme prejudice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We don't have a backup rack five, unfortunately. Um, 
So we don't want the left arm. We want the right arm towards him. Ah, it's kind of worked out, eh? 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 So P this guy and go here. Um, just in case, we'll fire it all. Yeah, we know how accurate we are, huh? I don't know what's up with Griff. He just doesn't have the accuracy. Maybe it's... I can't remember what I have in the head here. No, we got the improved fire control system. Oh, somebody's meleeing. Is this the summoner? It is. On the Mad Cat, huh? 42. Yeah, see, this kind of reminds me of a Thunderbolt. Like a half Griffin, half Thunderbolt. Look to it. He's like 65 tons though, right? I have no idea, because he's right beside me and I can't tell. Stop messing around with these guys already. Let's get this done. Yeah, he's overheating. Yeah. Oh, dude. Don't ever turn your back to someone like this. That's just not right. We didn't kill him, though. At least he's going down. Maybe him falling will kill him. Nah, we couldn't get that lucky. I'm here. You're here. Need better chance to hit than that. Yeah, we ain't gonna get it. So let's fire a maneuver. Reading you. Yeah, it's marginally better. Let's go up to this leg. Come on. Really? Oh, finally we got it. As soon as I did that, I started getting muscle spasms in my middle finger on my right hand. My right click my right click hand. Damn it. Let's move back here. For some days that I just wish. Wait, who's going? This guy? Really? Oh, lost my leg. I walked into this cocky, that was the problem. Detecting mech warrior injury. Good thing there's not a second lance. Yeah, you better run. Waiting for orders. Can't get down there. Affirmative. Hopefully we can get initiative before this guy next turn. And we'll see if we can take the leg. Gonna leave this off. Firing. Yep. Nice. That was lucky. But nice shot. Nice yeah, shot. Commander. Um, well, see if we can finish the leg on this guy. Both legs removed. Nice. Mech destroyed. Thank you. Yeah, you're going to be overheating. Order keep an eye on my heat, Commander. You keep an eye on your heat. It's your job, isn't it? Locked on top. Ooh! We weren't going to give that kill to blockade, or that was blockade, never mind. <laughs> I was thinking El Duce. Ah, uh, that should be it. Hopefully we didn't lock up here. Come on. Please don't lock up. Oh god, please don't lock up. It's just going to think. It's just thinking, that's all it's doing. There we go. Oof. So Griff ended up lying on the ground staring up at the sky and he's like, Is it over? Are we done? Wow. Well, I almost lost the arms. Yeah, see? It's just me goofing around. I shouldn't be doing that. We didn't really lose anything in the legs, though. They've been having a tendency not to really put anything vital in the legs anymore. Uh, I used to stack the ammo in the legs, but now I'm a 100% case believer. 
Um, I wasn't before because I, I I was one of the extra tons, and I figured the legs weren't going to get hit. But you know, people have changed my mind. I'm a hundred percent case believer now. It's like you kind of have to have it. You store the ammo in the torso. So we got our Mad Cat part here, Summoner parts, Timberwolf parts, which I think I'll just take three of. Let's just see what else is down here. We don't really need the sea bills. We've got a lot. Um, and we can always pull off. Yeah, see, I think it did have an Ultra 5. My guess is Ultra 5, um, ER large and two, two mediums, most likely, the Timberwolf. Or it might have had two, uh, I don't know. I'm sure Talendale will know for sure. Um, he seems to know a lot about mechs, so if you're if you're watching this, buddy, uh, if you could please let me know the loadout on the Timberwolf C. Um, I'd love to know exactly how it, it says it's crossover between the Marauder and a Catapult. So if it did have, it might have had two LRM. Well, it had two 15s most likely. I love, well, you know, it was overheating too. I was just going to say, I'd love to know how it got everything in there, but it could have been two ER larges and a medium. Um, the Ultra 5, which is a possibility, and then a pair of LRM 15s. Although this is juicy, we should probably take this too. Ah, do we go for C? No, nah, let's take the. Forget it. Let's just take the couple of Timberwolf parts. We're going to get one sooner or later. I'm taking the E-Cooling plus 5 because I don't want to have to buy it or scrounge it later. I just want to have it in the bank just so that we've got it there for when we get another Timberwolf. All right, a couple of Griffin parts, a Summoner part, two Timberwolf parts. Large. We had like, we had 10 of these in storage. 10 or 12 or something, and I sold a bunch. Now we have got 8 again, or 9. Um, yeah, we had so many just like ER mediums, like tons of lasers that I just sold, and they're worth like a, at least a hundred thousand or more each, right? So it adds up real fast in C bills. All right, the results could not be transferred, map could not be downloaded, so they must be working on it right now. Oh, well, there you go, we got a Timberwolf. Timberwolf D, I'm not sure if that was the one we were fighting. Let's just check it real quick and see if it was three, ah, uh, 400,000, really. Nah, I should have known better. But we got a Timberwolf out of it, so I can't really can't really complain. I played that mission so lackluster, I, I apologize for that, guys. But uh, it is what it is. The Orion's out for 30 days? Really? Really? Well, it doesn't matter. We got lots of sea bills. We can get it fixed. All right, let's have a look at this Timberwolf. Be nice to get this thing in service too. Maybe we can use this as the Ultra 20 build. So ERPPC, now this is a different version. So ERPPC, a pair of streaks. And I can't really tell what's here. Looks like another streak. It might be four streaks and two ER. Yeah, it could be two ERPPCs and four streaks and an ER small. Oh, the E-Cooling plus 5. We didn't even need to get it. Really? <sighs> Alright, lots of good stuff on this guy. A couple of streaks. Double heat sink. This plus 5 is like... That's awesome. It says 1.25 million, but still. That's one thing we don't have to get. Um, ERPPC. Yeah, we got like 6 of these, but still. Alright, um, so this guy could end up being the Ultra 20 build from now on for El Duce, rather than using the, uh, the Strix. We'll use this as an Ultra 20 build, and it is fast already, right? So, and they're ch they've changed the mask, the Supercharger, and the uh, uh, Triple Strength Myanmar uh, builds, the TSMs. So, apparently you can switch them on and off now, uh, which is great, because if we're not, we don't need to run fast, we're going to be saving a lot of heat. Um, although I think you have to be heated up for the triple strength Myanmar's to work for melee and stuff, but not, don't quote me on that, I'll have to check it out. If you know, drop the, the uh, comments in the comment section down below. This particular version looks like it's got way, like the armor's been severely reduced, which was probably most likely why it was so easy to kill for us. And it was our, I mean, it had reduced armor anyway. So we're going to just repair it. Uh, we'll just confirm this. We'll get a loadout for it later. And what I'll do right now 
Um, I'm going to end the episode, but before we end, what we're going to do is let's get everything moving here and repaired and ready to go so that tomorrow, once I've installed 999, we'll be up and running. Um, and let's just get everybody repaired here. So I'm most likely going to have to drop everybody out of um, the bays here. Uh, stand on ground and fight. Yeah. We don't run. We Jade Falcon, man. We don't run. Um, so I'm most likely going to have to put everybody in storage and bring them all back out, get them all refitted. Um, so hopefully, once we do that, um, everything will run smoothly. I might, if everything works great, I might attempt to load out everything first. I was planning on doing an episode where we reload everybody, um, but that's kind of boring. I think I want to jump right into combat, so I might try and reload everybody first. Um, so let's go to the base here. We're going to drop the, just because it doesn't really have anything in it before we do anything with the Timberwolf, we'll just drop it into storage for now. Bring it out for next episode. Um, so yeah, we're going to end the episode here. We got 5.3 million sea bills, which I think will be more than enough to bring the main lance back out. We'll have two Timberwolves, um, the Orion, um, and oh my god, my brain is like mush right now. <laughs> and the night gear. I didn't have to see it come up. And the night gear. Uh, so that's going to be our main lance. Uh, we'll bring them forward first. I'll get them all outfitted just so we can start doing stuff tomorrow. Um, well, for, it'll, for me, it'll be tomorrow. For you guys, it'll be Wednesday. Uh, now, if you don't see an episode on Wednesday, uh, that's because either I've been hugely delayed at work and I didn't really have enough time to install everything and get an episode recorded before I had to go to bed for the work the next day. So that's the only reason why. Um, if I do do recording tomorrow, I'm going to start with Falcon Freeborn. And then if I have time, I'll move and do an episode for um, Night Witches. Um, hopefully everything will go flawlessly and it won't take long to get everything installed and everything will be working fine and perfect and everything will be okay. But like I said, if there's, if, if I got issues tomorrow, if I have to work late, you may not see an episode on Wednesday, but it definitely will be Thursday. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll leave it there. If you liked the episode, drop a like. If you got any comments, please drop them in the comments section down below. Also, I'm open for, uh, ideas for new loadouts for the mechs. Um, I might not do them right away, but I will look them over. Um, most likely I'm just going to restore basically what we have now. We you know it might be a slightly different, but, um, if you got any comments, just drop them, like even for the, for the Timberwolves, if you have an idea of what you want to see for those, I'm definitely thinking one should be an ultra 20 build. Uh, and the other one, I like the idea of using the two, um, uh, um, heavy improved, uh, lasers, large lasers. So that's kind of how I want to go with those two. But if you got any other suggestions, I'm completely open. I mean, it'd be nice to be able to get a double uh, Ultra 10 build on there, but I don't think it just with the weight that we have, it just won't work. Um, I did try the double Ultra 20. It just, even with the e-cooling out and everything, there just isn't enough room for enough ammo to make it viable. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. All right, so uh, yeah, until next time, we'll see you later.